This is part two of why I don't trust Joe Biden. Joe Biden is old enough to remember that even as bystander, marching with his mother, a child, during the Vietnam War, if they crossed a U.S. steel crowd with U.S. steel construction workers, they would be spat upon and battered in what was known as a feedback loop for disloyalties, or what is known today as one. We're supposed to believe the Muslims are terrorists because a few hardcore actors or actresses go bananas somewhere in America under orders from God knows who. We're supposed to believe that Russia is more concerned with Afghanistan than they are with infant mortality. We're supposed to believe that surrounding them with hate after the, an opening like the dismantling of the Berlin Wall was somehow moral and justified. And so that they would believe we wouldn't start poaching them with tall tales the way we went after Iraq for weapons of mass destruction. America is a loony bin. Everybody knows it. And we have to figure out how to forestall our own lack of comprehension. What did Russia need after the wall, wall came down? What does any society need? They need help with infant mortality, with alcoholism, with homelessness, with degradation of their environment. These are things that all societies need. Iraq needed it. And we gave them burning oil fields, a highway of death. What kind of meaning are we supposed to derive from that as people of the world when we're told God bless America no matter what they do? I'm not siding with Russia's war in the Ukraine. It was to some extent a war of choice. But from their point of view, they had nothing to gain or lose from just sitting still. They didn't know what we were doing when we took down the anti-ballistic missile treaty. But they knew what we were doing when we went in with CIA operators and encouraged Nazis. They knew what we were doing when we pushed to their doorstep. We were demoralizing them. We were demeaning them. We were refusing to make good on the promises of a future together. We were hoping to defeat them somehow, the way we defeated Syria by destroying it. They're not blind or stupid to any of that. What did Russia really need was a foreign policy that embraced Russia's history. I don't know that Biden and Putin didn't collude in creating the situation that is known to me as Gail Burson in the Texas School Book. It looked like something Bush and Andropov did, and I know Putin was an understudy of Andropov. I don't know, is my answer, but I do know what the Russians have always needed help with. The same thing America needs help with. Education, welfare, ecology, infant mortality, and of course, life expectancy. And we refuse to do anything but amass weapons. Mick Wallace was saying in Irish Parliament that we give no heed, we don't even count the carbonic destruction to the atmosphere of weapons systems, of military maneuvers. We take those for granted. And we're already pushing overkill when it comes to fossil fuels. Jordan Peterson says we need an adventure. What adventure would be more important and finding a way to live in a habitable planet without engaging in ecocide and genocide. That sounds like a perfectly reasonable standardized edition of what the UN should stand for. And by and large, the United Nations does stand for it. What do they, what do they think they're doing in torturing a deaf poet? It's a wreckage so that Donald Trump can say when he's 80s, look how happy and healthy I am, and look at that wreckage, trembling, shaky, screaming on the streets in dementia. What do, what do they think they're doing? I'm one of the oldest names in America, 
I'm not bragging about it, but it was a symbol. And that's why they did it, as a symbol. I don't think that anybody mistakes that I'm just a normal, civilized old man. I go about my business. But they brought in gold diggers. They actually pulled out the gold from my teeth when I was living in Iowa. They're suppressing information for public safety in the name of gold digging. And they've already decided what the storyline is going to be. They wrote the script for the movie when they came into school and kidnapped and tortured me as a child. They refuse to look at the evidence about Mackenzie Shirella. They say they're coming from Strongsville, like strong men. I mean, it's a strange and catastrophic farce. How hard is it to see what happened? We've been living with the AIDS attack for decades now. People went along with this stuff and apparently don't care. I would like to see professional government put a stop to bio wars. That's one of the reasons I'm willing to vote for Robert Kennedy, even though he's been slow about all of this. What the hell do we think we're doing? in refusing to address each other in a civilized, comprehensible fashion. When Russia took down the Berlin Wall, instead of calling them ever more menacing, ever more frightening, ever more um, cunning, which is what the Bush administration said, I heard it in Montana, we should have said, what can we do to help you deal with infant mortality? How can we help you safeguard your infrastructure for future development. How can we help safeguard your reforms and your culture? What is it you want us to know about your history? What is it you want us to reconsider about your past? How can we thank you for helping us defeat totalitarianism? How can we go about doing something that we should have done in the 80s and the 90s when we're in Um, like what's that thing called um, the Paul McCartney's first record Ram yeah Ram when the, when, when, I mean, it, it, it's not an intelligent activity to be engaged in war when you can be negotiating peace it's just not when somebody gives you a gift of trust you should make good on that gift of trust by doing something helpful for them. That's what we should have done. What does Russia want? Russia wants to find common ground. They've always wanted to find common ground. I don't know that Jesse and Putin didn't have common ground when it came to the diabolical thingy of pussy ball. I don't know that they did. That may have been what common ground meant to both of them and nothing else. But I'd like to believe, I'd like to believe that they're sensible adult people who recognize a scam when it's put in clear print. This was clearly a scam. And my belief is that we need Hollywood oversight to prevent this kind of thing because it came from Hollywood. It came from acts of cinema. That's why I'm spending my time working on study of the great dictators and their relationship to Hollywood systems. Denuncio, Luigi, Freddy, Mussolini, D.W. Griffith, Reagan. There's a deep attachment on the part of our media to prison wardens in Pittsburgh who poison children for the British and Reagan. That's a hop, skip, and a jump when you pour on milk. You know what I'm saying? There is a super affection between the British 
prison wardens in Pittsburgh who poison children with neurochemicals, neurohypnotic chemicals. And Reagan, their kissy kiss 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 partnership. And what I propose is perfectly sensible. Do not allow prison wardens to use neurohypnotic chemicals on children in the tri-state area ever. And the British can get the hell out of New York if they're going to encourage those kinds of things. And lastly, I think we need to review the evidence that Reagan built his personality cult on a takeoff from Hollywood's relationship with the great dictators. Because like Mount Everest, because it's there. It is there. It's in the evidence. And I don't trust Joe Biden because he keeps saying it's not. I'm going to make you understand. I'm going to ask you nicely to say it's not. It is.